Hey guys, Archer here, a first year medical student. Today we're going to be going through how we can balance speed with accuracy in the UCAT. And using these tips, it allowed me to get into my top three medical school preferences in Australia. I've literally just finished my med school exams and I thought it was really important to get this video out to you as soon as possible since it's crunch time for the UCAT, especially for Australian students. And in a month or so, it's going to be the same for the UK students as well. Please stay tuned until the end of this video because I've got some incredibly good free resources to give you to prepare for the UCAT. Today, we're going to be going through how we can approach the final days in preparation up to the UCAT so that we're not wasting any of that special time that we allocate to it. In this, I'll be talking about the importance of accuracy and speed within the UCAT. Then we'll speak about how we can actually build speed and accuracy in the UCAT and how question banks fit within this. Then we'll talk about the importance of a growth mindset in preparing for the UCAT and what it can actually do for you. All right, let's get straight into it. So the UCAT is all about speed because it's so time intensive, but it's also important to not forget about accuracy. Really, you could be slow at the UCAT, but if you had a super high accuracy, you would do much better than someone who was really fast, but had low accuracy. However, even though I knew this was true, it was really hard for me to grasp the idea and get over that emotional barrier that I needed to focus more on accuracy than getting faster. It's so natural to just think that I need to be doing this quicker. But what you'll happen to see is that you tend to rush and this is what happened in my early practice. It's not a place that you want to end up because you're just gonna be pushing yourself above where you currently are and just jeopardizing your time that you're spending towards the UCAT. So basically I had this smart friend who was really onto the idea of speed instead of focusing on the accuracy with lots and lots of time. He pretty much smashed out all the available questions he could find and it was the same thing that his friends were doing. And when I asked him, you know, why are you actually doing this? Why are you doing all of your questions and you're going to run out? He basically said that he was just doing it because his friends were doing it and he didn't want to miss out if they were getting some sort of benefit. Like personally to me, it's so obvious that you need to be able to do it well slowly before you're able to do it well and fast. And he couldn't let go of this idea. And I think that's pretty fair because we've been built up for years and years how to prepare for school exams, but the UCAT is something so completely different. We can't use the same strategies here. Early on, the same thing actually happened to me. I thought that I should be spending my time towards doing tons and more questions and not spending all the time off the questions and reflecting on the processes that I use to answer those questions. But actually after committing to it, I could see that there was an improvement happening from the reflective process. Coming to this emotional realization that studying for the UCAT requires you to be more reflective about it is actually what set me on the right track so that I wouldn't be getting the same mock scores again and again and again like my friend did. I'll be breaking down this realization throughout the rest of this video. In fact, the learning process can be explained using Kolb's experiential cycle, which I've mentioned in another video previously. And essentially it's just a framework which describes how we learn and develop as humans. One of the most important things about your UCAT prep is that you need to be intentional with everything that you are doing. This is important time that you're taking away from doing some other things that are important to you, like seeing friends, working on your other school work, or doing the things that you love. Therefore, we have to approach the UCAT in a very methodical way so that everything that comes out of it is a learning process. And this should happen at all stages of the UCAT. We've all heard that we have to learn from our mistakes. And that's essentially what this video is about and how we can action it. And essentially, this is a skill that you need to learn to develop and you can train it like you would for training your muscles. In your learning process, you should end up with a foolproof checklist for every single question type in the UCAT that you can follow every single time that you are attempting a question. And this should get you the right answer every single time. And if that's not happening, then obviously there needs to be some tweaking that needs to occur to your strategy before you can move on. One of the things that you want to avoid is attempting time test before you can do untimed tests perfectly. Okay, so consider this. If you were getting 80% right now in the UCAT when you were doing untimed tests, when you add speed as an extra factor, that accuracy is gonna to drop to 70% or lower probably. Whenever you add more speed, the likelihood of dropping your accuracy is going to increase exponentially. So how can you really expect to get higher accuracy when you're practicing with speed if you can't even do it when you are untimed? It's literally like trying to make someone run faster on the treadmill when they don't have big enough legs to run that quick. You'll be going way too quick for where you are in the UCAT right now. And that's why it's important to approach this in its stages focusing on accuracy completely and then moving on to speed once you're done with your accuracy component. Doing it at the same time just makes it confusing and you're not gonna be able to keep track of what's happening in what stage. A lot of the time it's not actually that the students are unable to learn the process that they need for these question types, 
but they just don't let themselves go through this learning process where you have to be reflective. Okay, so what I'm saying here needs to have some context as well. What I'm saying we need to focus just on accuracy, we need to make sure that we're setting ourselves up well when we move on to the speed stage. The methods that we use have to be scalable so that when we move on to that stage, we're not gonna be using a method that's gonna take overly way too long to get to the conclusion and get the right answer. And that happens through refinement. So let's get into how we can actually improve our speed and accuracy. The other important thing with having a foolproof method is that it's going to allow you to build your speed quickly. The process of reflecting and refining your strategies to these question types is gonna allow you to improve incrementally. So we all know the UCAT is really time pressured. And essentially what this means is we need to get our first attempt of every question right and move on straight away. This is really important because if you're making mistakes and you're gonna be wasting away your time. When we're trying to build our accuracy and speed in the UCAT, we need to be very conscious of the attempts that we're putting in. And what this means is we need to be switched on when we are trying these questions. And you should not sit back and just do tons of questions. In the early stages, you should have plenty of time to reflect on your attempts on these questions and refine on that. Now, we can make this a lot easier if we do a few things. Part of the focus is on the rationale of why we do what we do. It's like learning with anything really. You need to put a meaning or context to it, otherwise you're just gonna forget it really easily. If you know the why to what you're doing, the process can become second nature pretty quickly and then you don't need to worry about the order of the steps that you need to do every time you see a question type. So the biggest issue that is stopping people from building speed are mistakes. Okay, so improving speed and accuracy is largely similar between a lot of tasks. And so we have some examples like getting faster at typing, playing a song on guitar quicker and getting questions correct in the UCAT quicker. Let's look at the typing example a little more. If you want to get quicker at typing, you need to have a very high accuracy and then you'll be able to speed up naturally. If you are making mistakes when you're trying to speed up, then you're gonna be allocating more time to fixing the mistake rather than having that nice flow and to keep going on and on. The same applies to the UCAT. If you make mistakes, you're gonna be backtracking, you're gonna be trying to fix those mistakes rather than spending the time on the next question. And if you get the question wrong anyway, then you've just wasted all of that time on that question which hasn't given you the mark that you needed. Making mistakes in the UCAT is super costly in such a time intensive exam. It's much better for you to just spend that time at the start of your learning process to get it right the first time. Then that will leave you plenty of time to sort out other issues related to the exam like stress and anxiety approaching the exam and then losing focus and confidence in yourself within the exam itself. Ideally it'd be ticking off boxes for the stages that we need to get good at. For example, we need to focus on accuracy and then speed and then our exams taking strategies and issues like fatigue. It's all about approaching it in stages and if you rush the process, you are accepting a suboptimal standard to go into your exam and that will show in your score. All right, let's get on to the last thing, mindset. So the final thing I wanna talk about is mindset for the UCAT. We've already mentioned tons and tons of times that we have to be reflective in the UCAT. And if you can maintain this, you're gonna save yourself a lot of stress when you get really close to your UCAT. You've probably heard of it before, but there's this thing called the growth mindset, which is better than the fixed mindset that a lot of people have. You know, the mind is actually really good at stopping us from doing things, and it doesn't really know what's good for itself sometimes. I'm sure many of you have heard of this before. Take for example, how no one thought it was possible to do the four minute mile. And then Roger Bannister did it. And then we saw many, many other people who thought it was previously impossible, they did it for themselves just because they saw Roger do it. Don't let your mindset limit you from scoring your actual potential. Don't say that you're just aiming for a 90 percentile because what will probably happen is that will be your maximum mark that you can score because you're limiting yourself. Besides all of this stuff, the UCAT really requires you to cultivate your resilience and persistence. The UCAT is a skill and it means that it can be developed and you can reach a level of mastery. If you sit a mock and it doesn't go as well as you hoped it to be, you really need to take a step back and think about what specifically went wrong there. Then you can pick yourself back up and get back working on how to improve for the next time. Essentially, that's the main theme of this video. And then I'm gonna be talking about in another one about my actual test day experience. But firstly, I wanna talk about what guided me in refining my processes and improving incrementally. It can be really hard to figure out what went wrong when you attempted a UCAT question because you're trying to figure out what is wrong about your initial natural thinking process. However, if you have a framework, it becomes a lot easier to try and diagnose what exactly happened. It's first important to figure out what the mistake was and why you made that mistake. Then from there, it's about thinking about what you should have done 
and why you should be doing that. And I'm not saying a mistake is just like, I misread that. It's something much deeper than that. And you have to go down to that level. You made some sort of assumption when you were reading it that led you to the wrong justification for the wrong answer. And I'm now going to be providing you the free resources which really helped me in refining my own processes. So Icomed has recently released their YouTube channel, but also on their page, they have a worksheet which has questions from the UCAT that you can sit under time conditions. And then you can watch videos that total up to two hours that are run by Ashton, who is the ICANMED founder. And he literally goes through every single step that you need to be doing in approaching these questions. I'll have the link down in the description if you want to go straight to that as well. This stuff is really invaluable and it's crazy that they're giving it for free because they show you just like a mass teacher would how you have to go through these questions step by step by step. The next best free resource that I can recommend to you guys is getting involved in communities where there's other people who are going through the same process that you are for the UCAT. I've linked Facebook groups for those sitting the UCAT in Australia or New Zealand. Uh, and also there's one for UK students as well. These communities have free webinars that they release on a regular basis that give educationally proven advice that can help you accelerate your preparation without reducing the quality of your own prep. So please check out those groups as myself and many other pre-meds and other students who are sitting in the UCAT are in those groups as well. So for those who know ICAMED, they are giving free resources which are frankly much better than what some prep companies are actually charging for. If you're still interested and you really wanna get your preparation done right, ICAMED has more than just this free tutorial that they've already provided for everyone. They actually have the same thing on their course, but for 2000 questions, which have each of their own videos, which would take five to 15 minutes where they go through that exact process that you need. Overall, it makes it really easy for you to figure out your mistakes all in one go, whether it be misreading something, making the wrong assumption, or having the wrong justification for a wrong answer. Literally imagine not having to go through the process yourself of trying to figure out the best method to use for the UCAT, but instead be given these super effective strategies which help you easily identify and fix up your weaknesses with approaching these question types. They also offer 24 hour feedback and help. And this is something I personally binged on when I was on their course as well. And I'm recommending them because they are what led to my success and many other students. Basically, these processes allowed them to have 700 students score 2,830 in the UCAT last year, which is equivalent to 90th percentile. So I've spoken to their team at ICAM Med to get us a 65% off sale for those who use the coupon code Archer. If you use this code, you'll get the largest available sale on the ICAM Med website. And this can be used for anyone sitting in the UCAT, whether you be in Australia, New Zealand, or the UK. Please check out the link in the description if you wanna see what they have to offer. ICAMED was so invaluable to me personally when I was going through this medicine application process. So I really wanna offer this to you guys. If you have made it to this part of the video, thank you firstly for making it this far and please drop a like if this has helped. I've got tons of similar videos on how we can improve our test taking strategy for both school and for the UCAT. That's it for this one. Thanks guys and bye-bye.